So I'm just gonna run through this Monster Factory card really quick and give my predictions. I'm not gonna take too much time with each prediction because there's tons of matches. Um, and if I get any information wrong here, I apologize. I'm just going off memory. I didn't do any research. And if I don't know who you are, please don't take offense. I don't know all these pullers, but overall, this is an excellent card. You can watch it for free. I do believe in the past they've all been free on uh, Monster Michael Todd's uh, YouTube channel, and I will definitely be watching. So here we go. Friday night. Um, so I don't know Brandon Scott and Robert Gold. I don't know Trey Suit and Mark Edwards. Russ Trader, Tucker Keating, both hands. Um, these are two of the strongest 242 pounders in the country. I'm not sure if there's a weight cap on this match at all. Um, but if there's no weight cap, I'm expecting Tucker will be 240, 245 maybe, and Russ will be maybe a little bit heavier, 255 maybe. Close match, I think. Uh, Tucker's the favorite, both arms. I would say right hand, like 55-45, left hand, 65-35. But I, I could definitely see it going either way. These guys are both around the top 15 or close to it for 242 in the USA, in my opinion. Carl Stanley, Benjamin LeClaire, one of my personal favorite matches on armfighter.com rankings. Carl is ranked higher than Ben right now, if my memory serves correctly. Um, I think Carl's around 10th. Ben's maybe a couple spots lower. They've never pulled each other. It's a contrasting styles match. Ben is t is Ben's one of the biggest dudes in the sport, probably. I'm not sure how much he weighs. I don't think I've ever seen him in person. He might be, forgive me if I'm wrong, he might be around four, 400 pounds, maybe, give or take, I believe. Um, and he primar primarily likes the top roll. Carl is a quote-unquote small super heavy, although I don't know if he's... I think he is pretty big now. He used to be a small super heavy because he used to pull 220s like 10 plus years ago. I think he's around that 300 mark now, though, and he likes to hook. And if Ben takes his hand, which I think he probably will, 70% chance, I'll say, Carl has a flop wrist press, too. I think this match could go either way. If I had to put money on it... Yeah, I'd probably go Carl. Maybe he has more endurance, so I could see it being like a war and Carl edging out the endurance. I'll say 3-2 Carl. Daniel Price versus Dane Sellers. I don't know Dane, sorry. Um, Devin Gagnabin versus Michael Polk. I don't know Michael, I'm sorry. I, I do apologize. James Clark Jr. versus Troy Brown. I feel like I should know Troy. That name sounds familiar, but I'm, I just don't. I'm sorry. David Hobbs versus Rance Clayton. Uh, I've heard of David, but I don't know him enough to make a pick. These are all Friday night matches. We have Blake Perry versus BJ Fokakis. Hold on, let me just make sure I didn't... Yeah, okay, so... Blake Perry, BJ Fokakis. Blake's really strong. He is... Probably, I don't know how big Ben is, Ben LeClaire is actually, but Blake for sure is one of the biggest dudes in arm wrestling, if not the biggest in the USA. I think he might be 450. Uh, super strong too, but BJ should win this match. I say like 75-25. Hopefully Blake can uh, make it close. One of my favorite matches, Dallas Langston versus Brandon Alcesser. Again, just going off memory, I did not memorize the, the rankings, believe it or not. But I do believe Brandon, I know for sure Brandon's ranked third left-handed in the country on the Arm Fighter rankings. And I believe Dallas is fourth. He's either fourth or fifth, so one or two spots apart. I believe one. Really close match. I couldn't say who would win. I'm not sure if there's a weight cap for this match either, by the way. But both guys are probably in the around the 215 mark if they don't cut weight. Maybe 220 if there's no weight cap because they'll put on a little bit of weight. I think Brandon's really strong and he's primarily a top roller. And Dallas is more defensive and he's got really good endurance and a really strong bicep. If if Dallas can stop Brandon without losing his hand, I think that he'll have the edge in the war. If he stops him with a flat wrist or a bent back wrist, maybe he can put the brakes on, but then I think Brandon wins. I'll say 50-50, but if I had to pick, Dallas has a good history at the Monster Factory. 
I'm sorry, Brandon has a good history at the Monster Factory. He beat Craig Tulier last time with the right, but he he was impressive. Yeah, I'm gonna come back to that one. That's that fifty fifty. I'm not gonna pick. If I had to pick, I'll think about it. Uh, Rex Forbes, Brett Rockers. Um, for those that don't know, Rex, he's super super strong. Probably top fifteen in the country at two forty two. Uh, but I gotta go Brent, even though he's giving up some weight. He just Brent just looks insane this year. Like he is, trust me, he leveled up this year for sure. Um, hopefully Rex can make it a good match, but I gotta go Brent. I don't think very many people under two forty two in the country will beat him, and and Brent's only two two fifteen, maybe two seventeen. Um, but maybe Rex is one of them. We'll see. I'm, I think that's gonna be a very exciting match. Two really strong guys. High level match. Mertela Aslano versus Corey West. Um, Mertela won. He was either first, I believe first, maybe second at the European or World Championships even in 2014, I believe. But Corey beat them last time they pulled, which was maybe a year or so ago. And it wasn't super hard. So, like, I haven't seen anything from Mertela since to make me think it would go any different. So... Since I haven't seen anything to make me think different, I go Corey for sure. Dallas and Brandon, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Brandon. I say 51 49. Really, it's like an even odds match. It could go either way. It's gonna be really close. Probably. All right. Roger Learn versus Craig Sublier. I do know both guys. I don't know enough about their current wins and losses to predict. Like, I remember Roger lost to Tim Lewis three, four years ago. Craig's a solid arm wrestler. I I couldn't make a prediction on that one. I'm not sure about that one. Hunter Knopf versus Jamie Barrett. Two strong young guys. I think they're both around... I don't know how old they are, but I think they're both around 20 maybe. I go Hunter on that one. Could be close. Uh... Jamie's from Australia, I believe, and um, so he's not ranked in the USA, but they'd both be around, I don't know what the weight class is for this match, but if it's at like 170 or 165, they'd both be around the top 10 in the country at that weight, for sure. Maybe top 5. Uh, Carl Stanley versus Craig Pumphrey. This is a really good one. Craig took a win off Pablo at Illinois States last year. Um, Pablo had an off day, in my opinion. Like a, like a fast off day. Like he wasn't even near his normal self. But Craig still looked really strong. But even though he got a win on Pablo. Pablo ended up w- taking second. And Craig placed lower in that class. But Craig looked strong. And Carl's better left. He pulls the same way right though. He likes to hook. If he loses his hand. He can pull without his hand. I think Craig probably takes Carl's hand. But if I had to bet. I'd say Carl probably wins. 3-1 or 3-2. Because he has more stamina, I believe. Um, Justin Bear. Okay, I don't know Mike. Micah. Micaiah, I'm sorry. Luke Pulcher, Robbie Karsten Diak. I think that's a really good match. Both guys are super strong. Um, they're both ranked on the armfire.com 190 rankings. Very close to each other. Robbie's really strong. Luke's really strong. If I had to put money on it, I'd put money on Luke. I think that either he'll beat him. He, I could see Luke going through him pretty quick, or I could see it being a war, but I give Luke the edge. Uh, they both primarily hook and are just really strong arm wrestlers, like pure strength, more more or less. Uh, Daniel Price versus Andre Shark. So Daniel Price did beat Andre at the East versus West finals in Virginia in June. However, Andre had a war before that with, I can't remember who to be honest, it might have been Doug Allen, I can't remember for positive. I think Andre beats Daniel. I think Andre is, they're both ranked top five, I think top five or top six in the country, and left-handed at 230, but I think Andre is stronger. I think I think he'll win this one. It could be close, though. Really good match. Again, they're both top five in the country, so... Just that alone shows the level of this matchup. All right, we have Paul Lynn versus Artem Taranenko, left-handed. 
Um, so they pulled after, just after pulling, they pulled after East versus West finals in Virginia in June on the left, and they were super, super close. I haven't seen Paul pull very much in the last three, four years left-handed. On paper, I think Artem is the favorite, but I am going to say Paul Lynn. It's like 50-50 basically though, but I I don't know. I'm just going to go Paul Lynn. Artem... He kind of goes up and down a little bit. I really like Artem. I think he's a great dude. But like lately, he hasn't been impressing me. I picked him. I know this is right-handed, but I picked him to place high in the round robin, right-handed, in, in Tennessee a few weeks ago, and he did not impress. So I'm assuming his overall level maybe is on is a little lower right now. Uh, 50-50, though, but I go Paul in if I had to pick so. Like 51-49. Plus, there's no weight cap, so Paul will have a weight advantage on him. He'll probably be like 225, I bet, and Arda might be like, uh, I don't know what he'll weigh, but maybe like 205 if I had to guess. All right, Dallas Langston versus Brandon. Um, they were already on the card for left. Are they pulling right too? If they are, I didn't know that. But uh, Brandon's probably better right. Dallas is probably better left. Brandon beat Craig Tulier. Craig Tooley is insane right now. So I go Brandon for sure if they pull right. Probably somewhat easily in my opinion. Now this is one of the matches I'm looking most forward to. Uh, at 170 pounds, we got Dusty Hyatt versus Jake Houston. And Dusty drank, I think, third or fourth in the country at uh, 172. And Jake's also ranked in the top 18, but lower. And... Just an interesting tidbit now. So they were both at the East versus versus West finals in Virginia in June. And Jake was around fifth place and Dusty swept it. No one even was really very close with them. However, Jake lost twice to Sam Harris, who Dusty beat convincingly. But he never pulled Dusty. And I believe that two things. One, that was in June, six months ago. So... Who knows how much Jake's leveled up or Dusty's leveled up since then. That's one thing. And because Jake did used to be even stronger than he was in June, I believe. And he had um, a kidney transplant. So he was just coming back. He seems to be really healthy right now. So it is possible that he gained quite a bit since June just because he's returning to his former former level. I also think that even though we lost to Sam and Dusty beat Sam pretty easily, I think that styles-wise, Jake has a good style for Dusty. That being said, I definitely have to go Dusty. Um, I think if he catches Jake and it's, an, and it's a deep hook, I could see Dusty maybe winning convincingly, but I also would not be surprised if, if Jake did something with Dusty's hand and if he can do something with Dusty's hand, he has a chance to to win the match. Uh, Jake smoked Kevin Pelico not long ago, which was super impressive. Um, and I don't think Dusty's like that far above Kevin Pelico. Like I do think he's overall stronger, also heavier. But if you look at Kevin's matches with Roman and Dusty's matches with Roman, I I think that the Kevin's not that far away from Dusty. But Jake flashed Kevin, and Dusty is quicker than Kevin, and probably slightly stronger. I gotta go Dusty, but uh, I'm really excited to see it. I think Jake's really at a high level right now. And I think he has the right style to beat Dusty, so I say like 70% for Dusty. And then we have one of my most favorite matches also, left hand. Corey West versus Pablo Derbidenev, um, more commonly known as Pablo, the one and only. They're ranked second and third in the country in the Super Heavyweights class. I just think Corey is too strong, though. I think Corey's, in my opinion, I, in my, just my opinion, I think Corey is probably top 10 in the world overall left handed, for sure top 15. And I don't think Pablo is quite at that level yet with, with his left. Uh, if they go arm to arm, I could see it being close, but Corey's got the stronger hand. And even if Corey doesn't top roll Pablo, like even in the hook, if you have the stronger hand, it's an advantage. 
it's hard to explain in a, in a short video, but but wrist strength is still important hook to hook. And I also, for sure, Corey's faster. Corey's actually pretty fast, and Pablo, I'll just say it, he's slow. Um, so I see if Pablo stops it, he's going to be on the losing side in the compromised position, and I just don't see him pulling Corey back from there. But hopefully he can stop it, and it can be a war. And then endurance-wise, too, I don't think either one of them have, have great endurance, so I think endurance is pretty close. But again, with Pablo catching and having to pull back from the losing side, there'll be more attacks on his arm, most likely, if, if it plays out the way I think it will. So I'm going to say Corey sweeps it. Hopefully Pablo can uh, make it a close match, though. Two insanely strong dudes, like crazy strong. So there it is, my predictions.